and we're joined by House Majority Leader Eric Cantor. Mr. Leader, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Major, it's a pleasure to be here. We're going to get to the specifics and the politics of immigration reform, but I want to give you like 30 seconds to tell me what the House Republicans have done, what they intend to do this year, what are the larger optics on this issue? Well, uh, we just came off of our uh, annual retreat uh, this week, and we had a very robust discussion about a very difficult situation, which is our broken immigration system. And I, I think the takeaway was, Major, there's a lot of distrust of this administration in implementing the law. And we just heard the president in his State of the Union address say, you know what, if he can't work with Congress, he's going to do it his own way. And that sort of breeds this kind of distrust, and I think we're going to have to do something about that in order to see a way forward on immigration. All right, we'll get to that. What are the principles, if you could enumerate them, one, two, and three, that House Republicans will demand for any comprehensive immigration reform bill this year? Well, first of all, I know you, that, that uh, you know that we are not going to take up the Senate bill. Right, that's uh, a given. And so one of the first things is we believe it is serious that we, and with some seriousness, that we control our borders, right? And, and this goes back to the distrust. There's not been a determined sense that we are going to secure the borders and make sure that the laws on the books are being implemented now. I would say that is a precursor and has to happen first. The term of art in Washington is a trigger mechanism written into the legislation that requires that to be established before any other progress is made on these other issues. Is that which the marker you're laying down? Well, what we're, what we're trying to say is there is a prerequisite here. Part of the reason why people are beating down the doors to get in this country is because the laws we have create the opportunity we're about. And so we want to make sure before anything else that there is border security and implementation of the laws. But, but you know the word is trigger. Is that what House Republicans well, will require? No, no one is satisfied with the use of that term if it is defining what's in the Senate bill. And so we, we would like to see a clear, certain, determined ability to get the situation on the border straight and implement the laws on the interior so that people can have faith across the country that laws are being upheld, and that has got to happen first. The principles enumerate a legal status for the 11 to 12 million illegal immigrants here in this country now. What do you mean by that, and does that des by definition mean no citizenship for them ever? L Major, let me tell you something. I mean, th there's a lot of focus on the immigration issue. Uh, but, uh, you know, in reality, we, we not only want to help the situation there, a lot of the discussion that we had with our members at the retreat was that we want to help the problems right now of job growth and the lack of the job growth. We know that 75 percent of Americans are living from paycheck to paycheck. We've come up with some real solutions to help America work for those people, too. And so I, I, I believe that you're going to see us in Congress not only continue this discussion on immigration, but we want to try and get to the heart of the issues that are affecting most Americans. Right, but Mr. Leader, you know as well as I do, this is a central dividing line issue, definitionally and optically, for many in your constituency. Not only members who have votes, but the voters who sent them here. Legal status, yes. Citizenship, never or possibly. Listen, where, where I think we ought to start, again, this is an issue among many that in fact most of the country is focusing on the question of the squeeze of the working middle class, the way the president spoke about in the State of the Union, the lack of opportunity that so many people are experiencing now. We want to try and deal with that as well. But as so far as immigration is concerned, we've said all along we don't believe in a comprehensive fix. We want to go in a step-by-step -step approach to try and address the problems. Yes, there's a problem on the border and implementation of the laws. I've always said we ought to be dealing with the things that we can agree on on which are the kids. Most people say this country has never held kids liable for the misdeeds of their parents. And I think that in many instances kids have been brought here in some unbeknownst to themselves mm -hmm. and brought here illegally but yet they know no other place is home. Certainly we ought to take care of that problem. That should come first because it just makes sense to start where we can find agreement. But you know as well as I do, to get this all put together, the president said this week that there has to be some meeting of the minds for all, not just the dreamers, the so-called kids that you just referred to. And twice now you've avoided the opportunity to say what the principles that were handed out to your members said here on camera. Are you running away from this even at the start, the idea that there will be a legal status and possibly a path to citizenship. I'm not Can you run, just define that for me? I'm, I'm really not running away from this. I, I know this is something that uh, a lot of people want to report on and talk about, but most of the American people are worried about okay. what's going on 
uh, in their households, the, the fact that wages have not gone up in this country in 10 years, and yes, we're going to continue the discussion on immigration. We have said yes. We came out of there saying, you know, there's some principles, these standards that were being released are draft standards. Uh, we had a very positive discussion, uh, and as I said before, some things that have got to happen, which is the president has got to demonstrate, frankly, the country and the Congress can trust him in implementing the laws. Look what he's done with Obamacare. He has selectively enforced that law, and some have raised constitutional questions whether he can even do some things like that. So there's a real question of trust here, and I, you know the White House continues uh, to really thumb its nose up, if you will, uh, at the Congress. The President in the State of the Union address did it flat out. He said, when, when Congress doesn't work with me, I'll just go do it myself. And again, that's part of the problem in this town and why there's been such a difficult time in getting things done. We're going to take a break right now. We'll have more of our interview with House Majority Leader Eric Cantor coming up. Welcome back to Face the Nation. I'm Major Garrett filling in for Bob Schieffer. I want to continue our conversation with House Majority Leader Eric Cantor. You mentioned the Affordable Care Act. Let's merge that with the debt ceiling. There have been some in the conservative movement who have said that there should be an effort to tie to the increase in the debt ceiling, a removal of the reinsurance corridors in Obamacare. That's essentially a fee placed on insurance companies to essentially help them through if the risk pool is inadequately arranged for them, meaning they sort of shield themselves from the economic effects of the health care law. Is that something House Republicans are going to do? Or will you present a clean debt ceiling increase to move this issue off the table? Well, let, let's talk about the Affordable Care Act first and then, and then in juxtaposition with the, uh, the debt ceiling. First of all, the Affordable Care Act, I think most of the public has now seen what we've been talking about. Uh, this law is a disaster. In my opinion, Obamacare is on borrowed time. Uh, you know, policies are being canceled, prices are going up, uh, access to hospitals and doctors are being limited. Not for uh, everybody. You would concede that point. For, for many folks, especially those in the individual market. And as we begin to see the further growth in terms of implementation of this law, you will see, I believe, more and more people negatively affected. And um, there's going to be a real problem, a real need for an alternative. And I Where's think that going to come from and when are you going to draft it? Well, um, that's what we talked about today, uh, this weekend, uh, I mean, this week at our retreat. Uh, I believe firmly that we will have a vote uh, on an alternative for a health care system that works for when? people. Well, I believe that we'll have it this year. We will have it this year. And, and you know what the reason is, uh, Major, is Obamacare, I believe, is on borrowed time. So no more repeal votes, an alternative vote. We, we, we will certainly. Uh, Obamacare, I, I think, again, is on borrowed time. It's not working. And we want a health care system that works for all Americans. And in fact, we had, a, we had a proposal, and the president continues to say that we didn't have uh, solutions. We put a solution forward in 2009 when Obamacare was passed. Many of the provisions in that proposal will be in our proposal going forward. You know, we're going to Who's deal leading up that effort? We're, and we're, when will we see it? Well, we're, listen, well, first of all, let, let me talk about what, what's in it, because, you know, we are going to deal with uh, those with pre-existing conditions. We don't want them to go without coverage. We just deal with it in a way and provide high risk pools so that we can limit the increase in cost for everybody else and do it in a much more cost-effective manner. We say folks ought to have choice of their insurance companies. Let them purchase across state lines. Help bring down prices. And then we say, you know, we ought to have patient-centered care, not care dictated by Washington, which is why we want to promote health savings accounts. These are the kinds of things that are in our proposal. Who will lead it up and when will we see it? Well, I, you know, there was a lot of discussion, and um, we've got our, we've got uh, there is a consensus about Republican solutions for a health care system that works for everybody, which includes those without a job, which includes those who are sick. Uh, and I believe that our committee chairman, uh, the Ways and Means chairman, Dave Camp, the Energy and Commerce Committee chairman, uh, Fred Upton, as well as the Education and Workforce chairman, John Klein, are all working on different elements of this that I believe will turn into an alternative for Obama. Timeline. Era. Uh, it, well, look, it, it, is obviously, it is obviously very important for us to get this done because a lot of people are hurting because mm -hmm. of Obamacare. What about debt ceiling? Will that be clean or will you attach things such as the insurance bailout, as it is called by some in your he, he, conservative here's, movement? Here, here's what I'm thinking now. I think that the last month has seen Washington actually make some progress in getting along and getting things done. Uh, you know that the uh, Paul Ryan, Patty Murray uh, mm -hmm. budget deal uh, manifested into uh, uh, the, the budget vote, the um, spending bill that was passed a couple of weeks ago. And I think that did reflect the reality. We've got two di very, very different views of how to go forward fiscally, but yet small steps forward toward reducing spending. 
Uh, I'm hopeful that that attitude can actually... Even though that added spending in the short term. Well, over the 10-year budget, when it reduced deficit, and what it did, it replaced some of the discretionary cuts, the uh, uh, the, the kinds of across-the-board cuts that okay. don't make sense. And what does that tell us cuts. about the budget, the debt ceiling? Well, what I'm out. saying is I think that that attitude, we should be able to work together yet again to try and do something to move the needle towards fiscal reform, to move the needle towards reduction in spending while we continue to incur more debt. Yes, but what... The question is, will that be a clean debt ceiling or not? What I believe is we can work something out, and I'm hopeful that the President and the Senate will work with us in the House to actually do what has typically been done with debt ceilings, which is making some progress towards addressing the spending problem in Washington, making some progress toward trying uh, to grow the economy around a debt ceiling. That's the way it's been done for the last three decades, and this president has uh, has just consistently said he doesn't want to even engage and is like ignoring the problem. So I'm hopeful that those days are gone and we can actually work together around this debt ceiling. There'll be no default, in other words. I'm confident there'll be no default. All right. Before I get on to uh, a Super Bowl question, uh, in the Weekly Standard about this issue, because it, it plays with immigration and Obamacare, bringing immigration to the floor ensures a circular GOP firing squad instead of a nicely lined up one shooting together in unison at Obamacare and other horrors of big government liberalism. Your reaction? Yeah, I don't think there's any question that Obamacare is going to play prominently this year. Uh, it will obviously, I think, inure to the Republicans' benefits uh, 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 at the end of the year at election time. So, yes, we'll be discussing people's health care because people are hurting. We're going to discuss a lot of issues, Major. We're going to okay. be discussing immigration. Okay. We're going to be dealing with the big issues of the squeeze the middle class is feeling, uh, the opportunity gap, and I'm hopeful that this president can come forward and finally sit down and work with us to affect some results. Before I let you go, it's Super Bowl Sunday. Russell Wilson and you attended the same high school in Richmond, Virginia, Collegiate High School. What's your pick? And uh, who are you rooting for? All Seahawks all the time. Uh, no question, I think, outside of Seattle, Richmond, Virginia has the largest fan base for Seahawks in any one town in the country. Uh, not only Russell Wilson, but Michael Robinson is from Richmond. He went to Verona High School. Uh, we're looking for a good game and a big win. Final score? Oh, don't even go there with me. So. <laughs> all right. Majority Leader Eric Cantor, thank you so very much. And we'll be back in just one minute.